All right, for anyone still watching online, we just had a question in the social Q&A about the possibility of walking through some of the results files that come up in VSP Arrow. So why don't I go ahead and open up a new open VSP right here. Hopefully you guys can hear me all right. Um, all I'm gonna do is add a wing and run VSP Arrow on this so that we can take a look at some of these. So. Um, let's change this to maybe 11 points and leave all of this stuff alone. I'll crank this up so that it runs a little quicker and let's make this 0 0.1. Why not? So we're going to launch this. It's going to burn through and it'll only take a moment. So we have all of this and you'll notice that these are effectively pulling information from the, the values that we had. So let me go to, goodness, that maximized over here. So some of these, uh, if we go to date modified here, all this unnamed ADB, the cases file, fem load, uh, the group file is a VSP arrow input file that helps it understand what parts are still and what parts are rotating. We'll cover some of that in the unsteady. But the ones that most of you are probably most interested in are this uh, VSP arrow input file. This is what the text file actually looks like. So you can see that it's got the angle of attack sweep formatted this way. It gives you your V infinity, your density, Reynolds number, all these options are already set. And here's your SREF, etc. So those are all set in there. Let's take a look at another one, our polar file. So with that one, that's going to be the text output of the polar. So you can see here we've got a list of angle of attack, our CLs, CDIs, etc. Now an interesting addition that uh, Dave Kinney may cover uh, in another talk, there is a modification to the VSP arrow code that is now calculating uh, or approximating some of the viscous effects as with angle of attack here. So again, that's formulated based on a NACA 12. So now, uh, a little bit different from previous versions of VSP Arrow, you'll notice that this CD not term isn't constant anymore, but it changes. So this is a way to try and incorporate some of those viscous effects into this CD equation. And through here you have, of course, all of your CF and CM values. And uh, if you scroll off, uh, you can get some of the others. Another one that uh, you're probably interested in, we can look at the load file. So we have each side of the wing, one is the right side, two is the left side, and then it'll tell you uh, how these things are being uh, calculated up. Here's some input files, and again here it tells you what the cord, the CL contribution of each of these pieces, etc. So for each case that you run, it's going to do things like here, angle of attack was zero down here, it's one. So it's going to give you each of these contributions. So here you can see the right side CL, the left side CL. So you can see each of these load contributions as you're going along. And let's see what else, history file. So this is gonna be your iteration history. So this is your incremental gem res results as you step through all of those wake iterations. And then Let's see, cases file. This is just telling you what the Mach number is, what the alpha is, what the beta is. And that helps you keep track of what's what. Uh, and the ADB file, I mean, you can open it up, but this is part of what's collecting all of that information together. And, uh, you know, Rob, this one's a little bit fuzzy to me. So if you, if I misspeak, by all means, correct me. But, uh, absolutely all the information mostly to be communicated to the viewer so it includes the mesh the cps all that information um you, it is not human readable and if you need access to that information i would even recommend you don't try and write a parser for that binary file because dave kenny reserves the right to change it anytime he needs to so if you need access to something that you think is in adb I would piggyback off of the parser that viewer uses um, by using that that I 
read the viewer code and write my own parser that uses that, or I would um, modify VSPRO myself to output whatever you think you need that's in ADB uh, to a separate file, um, rather than parsing ADB and risk that four months later your your all your hard work doesn't work anymore. Um, I mean, the format doesn't change dramatically fast, but it's it's not guaranteed to be stable. It's not meant for users to use. Right. And, uh, you know, Justin walked through and showed some of this stuff in the VSPRO viewer and uh, some other features that we can demonstrate here very briefly. Um, you can change the function shading. So if you don't like that this is kind of paneled and is using your per try, you can set it to smooth and it will make kind of this this blended rainbow of all the, the contours that you have, you know, if you want to uh, model pressures that way. Or you can use flat shading, which means that the underside and the top side are the same, uh, have the same lighting effects, or it's no lighting effects really. Um, and so we can step that back. Um, if you have control surfaces, so if you have a subsurface and you've deflected those, you can turn on draw control surfaces deflected and it will move those panels a little bit. Uh, if you run an XY symmetry case, it will reflect that to the other side for you. You can choose to add wake points. And of course, if you want to, you can color your wakes by body ID or by span location. So you can get some really interesting colorful results out of this. So since we have several solution cases that we can step through here, you can note that we can just step through these incrementally and all we're really doing is increasing alpha because that's what our set does. So just like any other solver, you'll note that it's not the geometry that is rotating in space, it's just changing the input free stream angle of attack. So if you want to try and keep this oriented so that the, the wing is increasing an angle of attack, you have to do a little bit of manipulation, but you can back that stuff out. But these buttons, you can step through quickly. So you can step through that direction or in that direction. And in this case, let's see. I want to draw that one. Yeah, so you can select the individual degenerate geometry surfaces and say only draw one or the other. Then we can turn that off and it just draws them all again. So um, hopefully that was a little bit of an extra demonstration of um, some of the features in the VSPRO GUI and the viewer and uh, walk through a bit of the formatting and some of the output files. I know it's not super detailed and, and provides a great explanation for it, but at least that's where they are and that's what they're called.